my name is Yeon Song. I'm an artist, researcher, and graphic designer based both in the Netherlands and South Korea. Firstly, I'd like to thank Beside the Screen Committee for giving me an opportunity to present my work and research. Today, I'm going to present my artistic research work, Rusty Odyssey, which was my bachelor graduation project at the Royal Academy of Art, The Hague, last year. Lost the Odyssey is the first series of my current long-term research uh, production project, the Metal Trilogy. The Metal Trilogy explores the critical maturity of three selected matter. It attempts to demonstrate how to unravel the intertwined argument within non-human material in the past and current social political situation through the artistic research method. The project Rusty Odyssey envisions providing the idea of inherited colonialism by a matter copper. It is structured into three parts as you watch it from the screen. The artistic transfiguration of the research is presented in experimental documentary film and mixed media installation. The short length film Rusty Odyssey is also currently a screening at the Beside the Screen YouTube channel at the Session 3 program right now. It depicts colonial faces of three copper coins, uh, tracing their guilty chronicle from the 18th century till the present day in the Netherlands, Japan, and Korea. The film is also further expanded into the installation work by using and bringing the materiality of a growing copper scrap with capital in real time. The last part of the project is the research paper subtitled Colonial Trajectory Copper Across the Atlantic I'm going to mainly present today. So I'm going to present my research uh, through the web version of the paper I establish. Hopefully the website is working good right now. Uh, copper is the first metal uh, processed by humans. It has accompanied the history of a humankind for approximately 10,000 years, disguised in various forms of tools such as currencies, weapons, and conductors of electricity. Former imperialists, the Netherlands and Japan, across the Atlantic enriched their territories, exchanging commodities and progressive ideas through the trade of copper. The mined raw copper was smelted in different forms that embodied the desire of imperialists exploiting their colonies. This research attempt to inspect the colonial trajectory of copper to observe its physical and spiritual transformation through five steps of copper processes, such as mining, smelting, refining, casting, and slag. Along with the transformation of a copper on the trajectory, I take multidisciplinary roles of a researcher and an artist, provoking the artistic voice to the Eurocentric idea of colonialism inherited over centuries and reasons. So let me move to the introduction part firstly. Uh, the whole research project is ba mainly based in the idea of new materialism. Uh, to explain new materialism, I'd like to shortly share the extract from my film, how the idea is reflected in research process.
As you watch through the film, I'd like to rebuild the colonial phantom behind the matter of copper. As you watch talking copper object with a fluctuating heartbeat, I want to consider copper as an animate material. Copper is not any metal, but a conductor that generates humiliating ideologies of a humankind guilty new materialism. In the idea of a new materialism, copper is a transversal human agency that has conveyed the propagation of a colonial ideology. I argue that it is an inheritor of a colonial capitalism. So let me move to process mining. Most of copper is mined or extracted as a copper sulfide from a large copper mine. In the 17th century, the total amount of Japanese copper production reaches more than 5,300 tons per on average from 243 uh, working copper mines. Actually, they were the biggest copper producer in the world. At that time, the Netherlands was labeled as Dutch Golden Age, entrenching the spirit of colonialism rapidly. I started arguing about the bronze atlas on the royal palace in Amsterdam, which is representative architecture from the Dutch Golden Age. Since the Dutch Republic had little mining resources and no copper, it is necessary to clarify how exactly the Dutch Republic had an outlet with the copper skin. Considering the historical document Appendix A, uh, the proving copper import from Japan during that era, the atlas could have gotten its flesh from Japan through the maritime trade that the Dutch East India Company executed. So from now on, I'm going to abbreviate the name of the company, Dutch East India Company, as the VOC. If you see the atlas again through this hypothesis, the figures of a native holding copper artifact under the outlet become the victims in the progress of the unfair resource trade. Their faces were engraved as a proof of a triumph looking down at the descendant of the colonial pioneer. Second process is smelting. Smelting gives infinite potential to a life of a copper stone, expanding the range of figures it can take. The mined Japanese copper ore was smelted into long bars until it became coins issued by the VOC named Dot. Yeah, it is Dot. Dot were compelled to be circulated in the Southeast Asian countries to increase the trade of VOC. The other word, one's imperial idea and other's mining resources were smelted together into one colonial monetary. It was a vehicle of power or it was a minted weapon demolishing the native economic structure. Interestingly, its trace can be still found in eBay at the average price of only $15 from different country. I saw this, I consider this phenomena is does not only the uh, archaeological evidence that show the sorrow of a conquered days of a native, but the byproduct of ignorance about the reproduced colonial ideas. It spread out through the international trade from Dejima Island, creating the circulation of a colonial capitalism. So let me move to the yeah, it is the name, uh, it is island, the name of Dejima. This artificial island was constructed as the trading post of the VOC, and all copper trade between Netherlands and Japan occurred around this island. The copper renaissance arose here, and it was a colonial cradle of the intimate bondage between two former imperialists. The rise of international trade through the copper brought a great deal of benefit to both the Dutch Republic and Japan. The academia of the current generation of intellectuals in the Netherlands Japan left a large amount of historical document about the exclusive maritime trade between two countries as imperial achievement. Meanwhile, it is hard to find any studies on colonial legacies that they left in the other. Process three, refining. 
The exported imperialism from the Netherlands along with the copper was refined in Japanese imperialism. Interestingly, it is exemplified as the fact the Oriental uh, Development Company uh, it is uh, yeah this picture is oriental development company was established with the same concept of the boc in japan it became even more systematic with the help of this company the japanese government could mobilize about 7 million korean and exploited the mining resources including copper japan concentrated on the manufacturing industry of the raw material Factory turbines spun to melt tons of a copper, copper molded into the tanks, machine guns, and bullets. Copper bullets dropping on the battlefield of the Second World War. Not only non-human material, but also human body was refined into a labor force being obliterated the national spirit. Next chapter is casting. The refined copper is poured into a mold. Now copper stands on the stage of infinite potential to be an artifact in any form, fully embracing the creativity of the artist. I concentrated in the material of copper as intertwined artifact based on the historical research so far as I explained. So let me share the one video. Yeah, a uh, variability of color, hardness, texture, and materiality of copper could be used in the film for the flexibility of the visual media and different techniques such as 3D modeling and scanning. The colonial trajectory of copper is also strongly intertwined with different ideologies and notions. With different forms and geographic context of artifact, copper can replicate or distort the idea of historical artifact. For instance, copper rust in the abandoned Korean mine is manufactured in the Dutch 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 as it is turned into the bullet again. This idea is also represented in film later by showing the transformation of a copper object as you are watching right now. Finer part is slag. Copper slag is a byproduct of a copper extraction from smelting. There are still lots of left over slag of a colonialism in the Netherlands and Japan. I'm a traumatized generation of Japanese colonialism in Korea and the torment prolongs in the Netherlands whenever I'm facing the colonial legacies. As Dutch black intellectual Gloria like Wrecker argue, I could find the reason from the absence of a Dutch imperial present in the educational curriculum. It is similar stance can be found in Japan. The Japanese Society for History Tax for Reform intentionally downside imperial Japanese war crimes. Thus, it is necessary for artists or filmmakers to expose untold history, provoking historian discipline statement through their work. So, this research is an outcome of my personal curation of the historical fact, not based on traditional historical value. However, it can unravel different narrative in which past and present collide as an unofficial trajectory. When history is delivered in the language of film, it can remind the fact that none of the stories told it objective or factual. It lifts the barrier of time between view and historical fact to generate a thinking place while the images are flowing over the screen and melting into the voice. A film can just raise a question in the viewer's mind to create possibilities. It can also push the limit of history and art as well as experiment on the interface between fact and artifact and reality and simulated reality. And I hope 
The film Rossi Odyssey and the research contribute to existing narratives of colonialism by providing an idea of inherited colonialism in post-Eurocentric perspective by a non-human material, copper, as alternative history. Yeah, thank you.